Uh, and she's transformational in three key ways. Num number one, of course, is the scale. Um, it is the largest warship the Royal Navy's ever operated in a thousand years of a history. The nearest really we can connect to is probably the old Ark Royal back in the late 70s. Uh, and so that's quite new for us. Uh, secondly, it's um, transformational because it's trans-organisational. It's the first time really we've had an aircraft carrier where we've embedded so many different uh, groups of people, not least the US Marine Corps in the future, also the Lightning Force, which, which of course is jointly manned by the Royal Air Force. But we've very much seen her as a strike carrier for fixed wing aviation, but of course she's much more than that, she's a sea base from which you can mount a whole range of operations. So we will operate helicopters from her as well. She's got a very well found uh, medical role to medical facility. And of course we can carry troops and Royal Marines and so forth. And the, the other reason she's transformational is we took a bit of a punt for this class of ship. Uh, through life costs and manpower is expensive. Uh, we couldn't follow uh, the, UN, the United States CBN model of, uh, of quite a high uh, concentration of manpower on board. And so we left it to industry, who gave them a lot of uh, challenges to put in technology and innovation. The Commodore mentioned that she was built from the keel up for what we call Generation 5 aircraft. And we took that design philosophy through the whole ship, uh, really to bed down on efficiency. Efficiency of moving stuff, whether that's pilots from their bunks to the flight deck, uh, through to food, through to sewage, uh, through to stores and also through to data and so the whole ship is optic fiber and we present that challenge to UK industry uh, with some partners of course in the US and this is the product she's 65,000 tons we'll have a crew with air wing of around 1600 probably a little bit higher than that in due course and built around 36 jets as the Commodore alluded to and probably up to about the capacity probably being 40, 50, maybe even 60 aircraft in the future. We also wanted to future-proof her as best we could, not just in terms of cyber, but also in terms of the new energy weapons coming along, lasers, perhaps retrofitting electronic, electric catapults in the future, the UAVs, but also the explosion of miniaturization, robotics, and also crucially quantum computing. So we bedded as much as we could into her to future-proof. And of course, that's really why we want to build her big. The old cliche, steel's cheap, air's free, build it big, why wouldn't you, has come true here. And for that reason, we put in a lot of electrical power. So we're powered by two Rolls-Royce Trent engines with four very large Watsilla diesels, which together generate a power grid. There's no engines connected to the propellers in the ship, it's just powered through electricity, which is a fully electric ship in that sense and we generate 110 megawatts, uh, which is some thump, I tell you. And I think that's just, again, proving against uh, the future of weaponry and whatever we put on it.